afternoon everyone and welcome back to the history of mathematics we are going to continue our work through Stuart Hollandale's book makers of mathematics we are gonna hit chapter 11 about Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz as you can probably guess from the name uh, Leibniz was, uh, was German and he had a very interesting career in a lot of different areas. And he is famous for being one of the co-creators of calculus along with Isaac Newton. So we're going to go and switch over to the document camera. Oh, Sophie is not in the closet. She, oh, no, she's right, she's right here. So let's switch over there. And, uh, and get started. Okay, so um, what we've got here are the uh, year of birth and death for both uh, Leibniz and Newton, and you can see their lives kind of overlap. Uh, Newton was born a little earlier and, and died a little bit later, so they were active around the same time. Leibniz was what is known as a polymath. In other words, he was strong in a lot of different areas and made contributions to law and politics, religion, logic, language, physics, among other things. And he is most famous today for being one of the co-creators of the calculus. In fact, there was a long dispute between the supporters of Isaac Newton and the supporters of Leibniz as to who should get credit for being the creator of calculus, but now it is relatively widely accepted that they kind of developed the ideas independently of each other, though there was some contact between them. Um, Leibniz was also responsible for most of the modern calculus notation that we use nowadays, for example, dy over dx, that's the Leibniz notation, whereas Newton would have used like y dot for dy over dx. Um, this notation is still pretty widely used in books about physics and for understandable reasons, mainly for Newton's contributions to mechanics. But for uh, most of his life, Leibniz was actually employed as a diplomat, diplomat slash political advisor. So he wasn't a university professor like Newton. He, he had, a, had another job and kind of invented calculus on the side. So I suppose the most famous thing that Leibniz is known for is the Leibniz rule, uh, also known as the product rule. Okay, so naturally every student of calculus knows what this is, so if you differentiate a product of two functions, you do not get the product of the derivatives. You get the derivative of the first function times the second function by itself, plus the first function by itself, times the derivative of the second function. Okay, so uh, it would be nice if the product of, if it would be nice if the derivative of a product was the product of derivatives. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work like that, and uh, every student of mathematics should should understand why that's the case. So let's let's look at that right here. So we'll say why is that? Why does that work that way and not in the in the simple way? So let's imagine that we have a a rectangle here like this. Okay. And the sides of the rectangle 
are given by two different functions. So the side lengths are two different functions. They can vary independently of each other. So the question is, as the functions change, what's the change in the area looking like? Well, if we have a small change in f, let's call that delta f, and let's put that down there. And another change in g, they don't necessarily have to be the same thing. So we'll have this type of situation here. Get rid of that little bit on the top there. Okay, so this area is f times g, the area of the main original rectangle. This thin piece on the top is f times delta g, and this is delta f times g here on the right hand side. Okay, so the change in the area is delta f times g plus f times delta g. Okay, so you got this plus this, and then this little corner piece right here, which is delta f delta g. Okay, so the main contribution for the change in area is right here, these first two terms. Okay, if f is changing by not a lot right here, and g is changing by not a lot, then this will be kind of like second degree of smallness right up there in the corner. So these two strips are the main contributors to the change in area. And if you notice, if we imagine, if we think about taking limits, right, delta f would be derivative of f, and delta g would go to derivative of g. Um, so you can see that's why the product rule has to look the way it does. It can't be anything else. And that rule is named after Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Okay, so that is a little bit about the product rule, and you can see Sophie exploring the coffee table over there. So the Leibniz rule, also called the product rule. So be prepared to deal with some questions about that in the next video, which we will link to, oh, right down there, I think. We will cover Leibniz's work on series. He did a lot of fascinating and great work on series, including a very interesting series that gives an approximation for the value of pi. So a link to that will be right down there about Leibniz's work on series.